now. Can you all see the slide? Yes. Uh, here we go. Okay, thank you. I think it just takes a minute. There we go. I'm admitting everyone. What's that hanging on the wall behind you, Ace? This is one of my kids' room. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is the only, qu only quiet space I was able to find right now. <laughs> I actually came into the office. It's really weird downtown. It's so quiet. And yes. Kind of creepy. I thought about doing the same thing, but um, I, I, I had meetings starting so early today that I said, no, I, I just might as well stay home. Yeah. Um, we have uh, people in the meeting who can hear you, so. I still see people in the waiting room. I just hit admit all. Mm That's a pretty good list of uh, participants. I'm sorry? That's a good list of uh, participants. Oh, yeah. 49 so far. I think people are going to keep coming in, so you have to keep <clears throat> admitting them. Just hit. Okay, so you'll keep watching out to admit people, right? Because I still see more. Yep, I think we're ready to. All right, so I, I uh, think that we are ready to begin, everybody. Hi, I am Cheryl Jacobs, Executive Vice President at AIA Miami and the Miami Center for Architecture and Design. Welcome. I want to first let you know that uh, please make sure um, I think everybody's muted. Um, for some reason, we're having some issues with the chat. So please, uh, if you have questions, you can send them to me all along. And at the end, we will, I'll read them. Um, send them to C-H-E-R-Y-L, Cheryl, at AIAMiami.org. And... Um, so we will continue to have uh, uh, an opportunity at the end, um, like we have been on these calls for you guys to, to have your questions answered. So I see that, is that Maurice? You're there? Yes. Okay, good, now we're all here. Um, so welcome again. Um, I want to bring uh, to you first, before I introduce our two speakers, our uh, first speaker is Daphne Gurry, AIA. She's the president of AIA Miami and uh, the co-founding principal of Gurry Matute, and she has a few words for you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. Just wanted to uh, extend um, gratitude for all the volunteers that work hard 
to make this possible and our annual partners. I'm the president of AI Miami for 2020. And uh, we have an exciting presentation and a, a couple of housekeeping things I wanted to say. This is our third virtual town hall meeting that we've held and we're gonna continue to do so to be able to add value to our members and our allied partners and annual partners to be able to share information valuable to you. And so stay tuned for next week and the following weeks, we're gonna have some topics related to how to conduct business development in the era of COVID-19, how to take care of that virtually, and some other relevant topics as well including how universities and architects are doing innovative projects to be able to help uh, mitigate this issue with the COVID-19. A couple of things I wanted to bring to your attention, AI Miami is only one piece of the puzzle here. We have AI Florida, which is our uh, we take care of issues related to uh, the state of Florida, and then AI National. And in case you haven't seen it, we have some fantastic free programming available to members and non-members with relevant topics, including uh, topics that you can find related to the economy, how it relates to architects. And today there's one being held, uh, again, free by Kermit Baker. He's the AI chief economist. It's starting today at 2 p.m. You go log on to the AI National. And that's the third of several series of topics related to the economy as it relates to architects. So that's an important one. And if you are a business owner or you're concerned about the, how to deal with the cash flow issues and related to how to manage during COVID-19, AI Florida is also managing, is, is hosting a, a topic this afternoon, I'm sorry, tomorrow at two o'clock. So this is an important thing to be able to see how AI is adding value to our members at all levels, at the national level, Florida, as well as local. So just wanted to say everybody here, to everyone that's on the call today, we remain open. You're supported by Cheryl Jacobs, our, our director, executive director, and Colleen Stovall who are here on this call today. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to let um, Maurice and Ace have enough time to go through their program. So with that, um, Ace, I'm gonna let you, We uh, up until now we've been doing uh, Q and A's, but there's such a full program of information to share with you. I'm gonna let Ace uh, take over, uh, Ace and Maurice. Uh, ACE is the uh, interim um, director of the City of Miami Building Department, and uh, Maurice Pons is a, the building official for City of Miami. All right, first of all, uh, good afternoon to everyone, and thank you for uh, this forum uh, so that we at the City of Miami can get the word out to all of the architects. Um, <clears throat> I, have, I have an agenda in terms of, of our services um, and, and how we are uh, operating under this COVID-19 um, uh, era. But at any time, if, if there's any questions, please feel free to interrupt. The, um, you know, no, no, we, we can make this as, as, as interactive as, as possible and probably a lot better that way. Well, okay. let me interrupt you, Ace, because we have so many people on. I'm gonna ask that people just send me their questions by email and then I'll, I'll interrupt you and read them because I don't want people talking over each other and making it a little difficult. Um, so uh, again, the chat function isn't working, so just email me, Cheryl, at AIAMiami.org. Okay, perfect. All right, so with that, um, um, I'll just jump right into it. Uh, so operations at the City of Miami Building Department, are we still operating? The answer is yes. In fact, we have never stopped uh, services at the City of Miami. Um, I, I know that we have uh, at the MRC, our, our operations building, we have essentially um, wind that down over the past uh, month and a half. Uh, that is, um, we have um, essentially come to the point where that facility is actually closed uh, as of uh, April 7th. But we have maintained all of our services and all of operations. And we are 
uh, one of the one of the reasons we have been able to do the, do so is because we transitioned, as many of you may know, uh, back in uh, December of 2018 into electronic plan review. That has been a godsend to all of us because it it, allow, it basically allowed us for having continuity of services remotely, uh, and and um, and so with that in mind, I'll I'll go a little bit into all the different services that we provide and how those services are being still provided today, even though our main permitting center is closed to the public. Um, one of the first things that I wanna talk about is plan review. So yes, we continue to maintain plan review. All of our reviewers, um, and, and not only uh, in terms of building, but this also uh, goes for um, planning, for fire, uh, for zoning, uh, and public works, there are uh, the level of, of, of service in terms of, of, of electronic plans review has, has, been, main, has been maintained uh, throughout COVID-19 um, uh, without a hedge. And, and that will continue to do so until we're able to go back to our um, permitting center. Um, with that, I want to talk, uh, you know, touch upon a couple of things. Uh, one of them being probably the most important to the architects, which is the, uh, the, di the digital signature. And, and, and maintaining um, operational services while some of you may not have a digital signature. Uh, so um, back in uh, March, uh, March 18th, we made a business decision that we would allow essentially um, architects and design professionals that did not have a digital signature to be able to print, sign and seal those drawings and then uh, essentially scan it themselves and, and submit it to our electronic plans review for review. The, the restriction that we put on that was that they had to maintain those uh, uh, hard copies in case uh, we decided to do an audit, um, you know, as we open back MRC to make sure that indeed those who said um, or claimed that those uh, uh, plans had been signed and sealed, that indeed we can go back and double check those. But essentially you're able to, if you don't have that digital signature, you're able to still maintain uh, your business and continue to move forward and do business with the city of Miami building department. Um, now we do strongly encourage all of you guys to uh, use this um, phase to um, get a, a digital signature. It's not that complicated and, and, I, and I'm always an advocate for that particular um, uh, method of signing and sealing your, do uh, your documents. Um, also one important way of continuing to do service with the uh, bid, uh, city of Miami and plans review is building department consultations. Um, I'm, I'm going to share with a lot of you guys a web page um, that we have actually uh, developed at the city of Miami that gives you updated information in terms of all of our permitting services. And in that particular uh, web page, there is a um, link to all of our um, um, staff directory. Uh, if you feel that it's necessary to um, have a conversation with one of our plans reviewer, you can use that directory to schedule a meeting with any particular plans reviewer, and they will be more than happy to accommodate so uh, through a um, medium such as Zoom or uh, Microsoft uh, Teams. So those are still available and at your disposal, and please use them if you need to. Um, now, another topic that has been of uh, very importance to our uh, our community has been the legacy plans. And those are, those are plans that uh, essentially did not make the cut back in uh, December of 2018 and remain being processed in paper. Um, there had been a, a, uh, several discussions of making that transition to e-plan, but that had never really materialized. And COVID-19 really gave us that, um, um, that chance and that opportunity. And what we have done is essentially all of the legacy plans that were at, um, at MRC, at our permitting center um, at the time that it was closed, we took all of that population of plans and we sent them to our vendor, which is Blue Digital. And they're in the process right now of scanning that entire population of plans and we're transferring them into electronic plans review. So whatever's pending in terms of Approvals will be conducted in an electronic format. All of the other approvals that you had obtained up to now will remain in the system. It will be just for depending approvals that are required. Now we will also do the same for 
any other legacy plans that you still require, such as additional plans, revisions, or rework, we would do the same. We would process those electronically. Uh, now, the website link that I will share with you guys before this uh, meeting is over will have all of the information that's relevant to that, uh, inclusive of uh, Blue Digital's contact information, so that um, if you have any uh, legacy plans that falls under that category, you can take them to that vendor. They will gladly scan it for you and we'll process it electronically. Okay. Um, with that, I will jump into um, our inspections. There have been a lot of questions about ACE. Is the city of Miami conducting inspections? And the answer is yes. Yes, we are. Now, um, because we are in COVID-19 uh, era and there's a little bit of concern about occupied buildings, and I will probably put in that group a couple of categories, single family homes and condominiums, right? There's a lot of, there has been a lot of, a lot of friction whether we can actually go into, it's a safe for our inspectors to go into those uh, 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 particular uh, construction sites. And so we have made the business decision that we would not go into occupied facilities, right? For health, for obvious uh, re uh, health um, uh, risks. And so, but we have provided uh, alternatives that the industry can follow. So we are essentially still going to and inspecting construction sites that are not occupied. So if you have a, con a construction job site where um, the only activity that's going on at this present time is construction, we will go into those um, uh, construction sites and perform all the required inspections. Um, now, in single family homes, if, if, if the inspection is on the outside, so if you're doing a roofing, if you're doing a fence, if you're doing a driveway approach, we will still perform those inspections because we are not essentially having to enter the actual uh, residence. So we will still conduct those. But if you have um, single family work or, or condominium work that still um, is under construction and, and you will still finalize those inspections, what we have essentially provided is for you to be able to retain a licensed architect or engineer to perform those inspections. Okay, um, there are, again, in the link that I'll provide to everyone at the end of this presentation, very clear instructions on how those inspections can take place. And the only restriction that we have actually placed is that that architect or engineer that is selected essentially does not have a financial a conflict with the uh, uh, construction site that they're inspecting. And the obvious question that comes up is ACE, as the architect of record, as the engineer of record, can I still perform that um, uh, inspection? And then the question that I would like you to answer is, do I still have any services that I'm still performing to this owner throughout construction that becomes a financial uh, conflict? And if the answer is yes, then no, you cannot perform those. But if, you, if your services have essentially been completed, right, and you have no other financial obligations to that owner, then the answer would be yes, you can perform those inspections on behalf of that owner, okay? Uh, you, you need to take very good notes, uh, pictures, and, and videos as you do those inspections so that you can properly document them at the time of, of submitting them back to the city uh, for transfer into our system. Um, now, obviously the same applies for our permit counter. Is that, you know, our permit counter doesn't have a physical presence in our building department because it's closed, but we do so very actively uh, remotely. There is an email, it's, uh, it's called ePlanBuilding at MiamiGov.com. Uh, and again, I'll share that uh, with you guys at the end of the presentation. You can essentially email to that particular uh, address all of your permitting needs, okay? And I'll, I'll quickly outline uh, just a couple of them for you. You know, if you have, for example, uh, legacy applications that you need to process, uh, if you have uh, revisions, if you have face permit requests, if you have um, change of contractors, uh, change of architects or engineer forms, if you have um, essentially um, uh, documentation that you need to submit for in terms of your contract, if you have, if you're a contractor and you need to update your, your um, insurance requirements, your, your, your license requirements, all of those transactions can still be performed by using that particular um, email address. Uh, there's a, there's literally an army of, of uh, uh, 
uh, permitting staff behind the scenes that all of those uh, requests are being assigned individually and they will shadow you throughout the entire process to make sure that that particular transaction is closed uh, satisfactory at the end of the day. We have, do, we have done so the same for our um, uh, microfilm request. Uh, many of you may have gone through the nightmare of actually having to visit MRC to request <laughs> microfilms before and it was, you know, oh, there's a 30 day wait. Well, we, we have actually transitioned all of that also to an email. Uh, and uh, that's uh, building records at miamigov.com. Uh, uh, and what we have done is we're not dealing with paper anymore. We really em embraced uh, this digital concept. And what we're doing is we're processing those requests. And at the end of the day, what we're doing is we're sending you a, a link to download all of your microfilm requests in PDF format. Uh, actually, that particular transition has been very welcomed, uh, not only by our internal staff, but by our um, um, requesters because they have now a digital document that they can save. They have a digital document that they can upload directly to their projects. It's a much more manageable product now that we're in a digital age. And then the last thing that I want to topic, uh, I want to cover is the unsafe structures. Uh, if any of you guys are doing any unsafe structures, uh, uh, 40, 50 year recertifications, uh, those were due by April 30th of, of for those that fell within this uh, calendar year, those recertifications were due by April 30th of, of, of this year. So that's, you know, a few days away. And what we have done is we have essentially extended that deadline by uh, six months. So that puts you into November 30th of um, 2020. So uh, if you have uh, clients that are looking to recertify uh, those, um, uh, 40, 50 year old structures essentially have an additional six months to complete that um, a requirement. Um, you know, you have facilities that are currently occupied. Uh, you have um, um, condominiums that are, it's very difficult to conduct those at this point when you have all of those facilities that may be occupied. So if you, if you need additional time, it's right there at your disposal. That deadline has been essentially shifted for all. Um, and um, with that, I think I pretty much cover my, my, my presentation. I, I really want to highlight that the building department is, is up and running. We're, we're, we're here for business. I, um, I will gladly share my email and contact information at the end of, of, of the session. And if you guys have you know, questions that were not able to be answered or, or, or asked during this particular um, um, uh, meeting, please send me uh, so, uh, do, you know, via email and I will gladly uh, answer that uh, on a one-to-one -one basis. Uh, Pons, with that, do, do you want to add anything to, to this uh, presentation? Got it. How are you doing? Marie Spons, I uh, know it's very thorough, your, your presentation on all the uh, building department activities that got moved out remotely. Uh, everything has been functioning very well. We monitor our emails on a daily basis, and staff is has is all has the equipment and to be able to respond to um, to all the customers' needs. And the only thing I would have add is we're working on right now. Uh, we're developing policy and how we're going to go. We're going to look into going into doing some virtual inspections on a phasing per uh, uh, on like mechanical electrical and plumbing permits and have not the inspectors go out to all, every inspector but there will be some inspections that will be done through uh, virtual inspections in the in the coming future great um and i also want to highlight before i forget uh under the uh governor's uh declaration of emergency um for all of you guys uh, yes. have yes. constructions that are that have permits that are about to expire, you automatically granted a six month uh, uh, plus the duration of the emergency extension on those permits. So uh, if you're running into any, any of your permits that are uh, you know, about to expire, <clears throat> please do not hesitate to reach out directly to Ponce or myself. We will gladly grant you that extension so that uh, you don't have any issues with the construction, okay? Great, thanks. Um, so I'm gonna go through some questions, okay? 
the first one is from um, Robert Grabowski. And his question is, is there any training that architects uh, should go through uh, that you know of uh, before they perform uh, the rough inspections? Any training that they should do before any rough inspections? Uh, any professional or, des or design professional or engineer architect must feel comfortable with the special the, the inspections he's doing, uh, he's performing. If he if he doesn't feel comfortable, he shouldn't be uh, performing the inspection. Okay. <laughs> There's also the uh, Association of Building Officials that have all kinds of things on their website, all kinds of information. Um, the next question is uh, Catherine Tunnel. Um, oops. You know what? Never mind. That was not a question. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm going through my email. Um, Wesley Keene, uh, it's important for us to get specific feedback on complex interpretations of the zoning code based on specific unique designs. Normally, we meet with a zoning reviewer in person to gain some of this valuable feedback. However, we're wondering if there is a way to still get this feedback without going through the formal and lengthy process of a dry run submission. You know, that's, that's uh, Wesley, that's a zoning question, that's which, a zoning. I, which I will gladly take with the um, uh, zoning administrator. Uh, I, I will give you my email at the end. If you want to take it now, uh, it's A M A R R E R O at Miami Gov. MiamiGov.com. Uh, Wesley, send me your email and I will gladly put you in contact with the zoning administrator to make sure that there is um, a response and or a uh, means for you uh, for you to get that feedback that you need on those complex uh, zoning projects, okay? Okay, I have a, a question. Uh, this is um, also a little bit different, but um, Maria Luisa Casianos, uh, who is the supervisor for fire? I thought it was Daryl Brinson. I wrote him to ask him for a Zoom meeting to go over comments by a fire reviewer I did not agree with and I got no response. Please advise whom I can email and get a Zoom meeting. And also, who's the supervisor for environmental resources? So, so Maria Luisa, uh, the answer for fire would be the fire marshal. Okay, so if you have any issues in terms of fire, the authority for the um, for the um, for the fire department will be through the fire marshal, and his name is Adrian Placencia. Um, Placencia, um, Adrian Placencia, and so that will be the the person that you will need to contact if you have a fire uh, question. Now, in terms of environmental resources, um, that will be Quotisha in terms of trees, but you can go directly to the uh, director of, of planning, and that will be Mr. Francisco Garcia. Okay. Great, thanks. Also, we're recording this. I forgot to ask your permission, Ace. May I have your permission to record this meeting? Absolutely. <laughs> and we will be close. It takes a little while for Zoom to get the uh, file to us, but as soon as uh, we get that, we will be posting it on the website. Um, the next question is from uh, Daphne. Is the city of Miami following the amendment number one to Miami-Dade County Emergency Order 14-20? Specifically, what, what, what of those? Uh, Daphne, which specifically, which uh, which of those sections are you are you uh, making reference to? Well, it looks like as if they issue. Well, first of all, there's a pecking order, so we follow the federal guidelines, state and county, and then municipality, right? So my question right. is, if there's any discrepancy between information that's being put out from the county versus information that we're receiving for the city, are we to assume that we need to go with the most restrictive of the two? That would be my first. You, you would definitely need to check both of them. So uh, as far as 
um, those orders as, as they have come down, uh, I will just make a, a little bit of a highlight on a couple of points that, uh, points that affect our industry, both the, um, the construction industry, regardless of construction type, has been deemed uh, essential. That has not changed at any level. And, and our architects and engineers offices have also been um, uh, included in that category. So uh, in terms of state level and local, none of that has changed and we continue to have consistency across the board. Yes, so specifically what, what I'm looking to get a little clarification is on really two things. So the first one is whether or not if an architect that is under contract is deemed to have a financial interest because if you read the statements, it's based on construction. Do you have any interest in the construction? Financial interest in the construction. So we as architects do not, unless we are the contractor one and the same, or we're in a design bill relationship. But if we're working directly for the owner, still providing CA services, is that deemed to be a conflict? Juan, you want to take that one? I, if you're the architect of record and not the contractor or have any ownership, uh, then uh, there's no issue with you being what uh, the special inspector, which is basically uh, is, what this is, is a special inspector that you're, that we've enlarged the scope of what areas are you able to inspect. You're able to take it all, do all the inspections all the way to the final. Okay, yeah. all right. And then the follow-up was, that, that's good. That was a big clarification that I needed. And then it appears that uh, the mayor signed this amendment on April the 9th, which basically it sounds as if, unless I'm reading it incor incorrectly, that they are basically reverting and, and would prefer county inspectors to continue to do the inspections, whether if it's virtual or if it's by appointment. So that's another thing that I want to clarify. As, Go ahead, Bons. As per the city's, uh, the policy that the, the, the building department has written is we're doing inspections in buildings that are not occupied. Okay. Uh, apartment buildings are being constructed, office buildings, warehouses, etc. If it's a building that is occupied, let's say you're doing the 14th floor of an uh, interior build out in Brickell, that final, that inspections could be done by the architect or engineer. Okay. There, there, is a slight, there is a slight difference between that policy at the county level and at the city level. So, so in that one, we are a little bit more um, proactive in terms of providing inspection services to the uh, city uh, residents because we are still going to uh, inspections that are not um, uh, occupied. So those are, we are uh, still performing without any, any sort of, of restrictions at this time. Okay. And so the ability, now you could, if, if the owner still wants to um, contract with, um, with uh, an architect or engineer to still provide those inspections for those particular buildings, uh, you know, we will definitely consider that as well, but that doesn't mean that the city is not performing those inspections, okay? Thank you. Okay, actually, I don't see any more questions on my email. Um, so I wanna give you guys another, one more opportunity. It's, uh, if you have a question, uh, email. Phones. Huh? Mm -hmm. That's, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Yeah, we, we can open up the microphones. Maybe they can ask the questions. <laughs> uh, there's there's, there's 80 people on the uh, call. I'm sorry, Colleen. There are 80 people on this call. Should I unmute everybody? Is there, or? Is there yeah. a way for them to raise hand or, or, or? Yeah, just to mute everybody. They can ask a question and then we can mute, we can mute them again while we okay. answer the question. Well done. Okay, you asked for it. Here we go. <laughs> uh, hold on a minute. There it is. Angel's raising the hand. Okay. Unmute Angel. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay. Angel? You're on, Angel. You gotta have a microphone, though. <laughs> <laughs> Mute okay. Uh, turn okay. The whoever wants to talk, still yeah. mute themselves. Oh. Though. Okay, Nati, I see you. I see you too, but I don't have anything to ask. Uh, but oh. I was trying to help Angel um, with his technology. <laughs> 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 yeah, I think still, if anybody wants to email me, go ahead. If not, um, I don't, I think that we're, I think. Let, me, let me, let me go ahead and, and make sure that everyone gets my contact information. Sorry, um, can you send your email? I'm going, I'm going to do that right now. Can you pop on your email? Yes, we're, okay. we're going to send his email also. We'll send something. What is your email? Uh, his email, and um, then we will also post it uh, afterwards, and um, you'll be able to get all your questions answered. Perfect. All right, you want to give us your email again one more time? Sure. A M A R R E R O at Miami GOV dot com. Um, my uh, email is M Pons P O N S at Miami Gov dot com. Fantastic. Uh, Daphne, do you have any, uh, any yeah. closing words? Yeah, I think, uh, well, uh, while people are still thinking about what their questions should be, wanted to recap. So uh, a client that wants to submit something new, uh, they can, uh, permit fees and all that can be done through the e-plan. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, the entire process can be cradle-to-cradle uh, -cradle performed uh, digitally. So that, that's inclusive of performing your, you know, creating your application all the way down to uh, paying for those permit fees. Uh, I see we have a, a question here from uh, uh, Mr. Gibb. Uh, you can probably unmute, you need to unmute yourself. Sorry, I need the email address for, so I can ask a question. Sure. A? No, Ms. Jane. No, no, just... Just um, send the, if you're asking now, send it you to You can ask it now. Yeah, just ask, as long as you're. So I had a, a project that's under construction to turn in a revision. Uh, they're saying I can't do it uh, electronically because it started as a paper project. Okay, so we have already changed that policy. Um, and uh, we are already scanning. Oh, so if you have, if you just need to submit a revision, you uh, complete that permit application, uh, the old paper uh, permit application, and then you're going to email it to um, eplanbuilding at miamigov.com. That's eplanbuilding at miamigov.com. A permitting coordinator will do the intake. They will um, generate the revision, and then they will give you two options. Um, because if it's, a, if it's a legacy plan, they'll give you the option to go to Blue Digital to scan those um, uh, hard copy um, papers for uh, processing, or they'll automatically create the project in uh, ePlan project docs, and you will be able to upload those documents electronically. So you have both, both options at your disposal. Okay. He's, he's got a follow-up question. Oh, go ahead. You have to unmute yourself. Sorry. When did that policy change? This week. We just okay. we just we were just able to negotiate a the terms with uh, our blue digital vendor so that we are so that we have essentially that um, um, option available to our, uh, our customers. Okay. Now, Great. if you, if you run into any and if you run into any hiccups, please uh, 
uh, don't, don't hesitate to, to send me an email and I'll make sure that it gets taken care of right away. I see Great. Lynette has a question, Lynette Arias. Hi, um, Ace, I wanted to ask, you had talked about the extensions on the permits of the um, six months, but does that also apply to the plan, you know, the plan review? If it had not been issued a permit, can you still okay. um, so take question. advantage of that? It, it, it does not apply to, it does not apply to plans review, but uh, both Maurice and I are applying a lot of, a lot of leniency throughout this period. So if you have plans that have become inactive throughout this, uh, uh, this COVID-19 era or, or slightly before that, doesn't matter. Just send, send both Maurice and I an email and we'll be more than happy to work with you guys and get those uh, plans uh, active again so that you can continue with the review process, okay? Okay. And my second question was, um, I see on the Miami-Dade website that they've gone into um, using either FaceTime or um, I'm not sure if it was um, Microsoft Teams. Microsoft Teams, Teams. yes. Right. So that, that is the policy of Miami-Dade County in terms of virtual inspections because a lot of their inspectors are not actively going out to construction job sites as we are. Now, what we are doing right now is evaluating a similar policy <laughs> inspections. And what we're going to do is in the first phase, hopefully we'll be ready in the next uh, days. In the next phase, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be rolling it out to what we, the population of our permits that we call today EC permits. Those are permits that are over the counter that you're able to get for your different uh, um, building trades, such as electrical, uh, mechanical plumbing, um, and because those are uh, EC um, jobs that um, you know we feel a a as a first phase uh, electronic uh, video uh, inspections, uh, it's 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 adequate. So um, do be on the lookout. We're going to be rolling that out uh, uh, shortly, but it will be on a on a limited basis. Essentially, for now, uh, for our EC um, uh, permits uh, uh, scope of work. Great. Uh, thanks. Are there any other? I don't have any more emails. Um, is there anyone else that would like to ask a question? Okay. Okay, let me check that in my plans. Everyone's muted now. Okay. So um, is there anyone else that would like to ask a question? You can unmute, but just hold your hand up because, okay. So we are going to post the video of this, um, hopefully this afternoon. Um, we will also have, uh, again, Ace's and Maurice's um, emails. And um, if you have, any, if you think of any uh, questions, um, we the, will. Uh, he'll be able to answer. The last thing that, if if I'm given the ability to share the screen, the last thing that I wanted to share was the web page at the City of Miami that everyone can go to to get the latest update in our permitting services. Uh, that's, it's quite a long link, so I, I'd much rather just show it. Um, but I don't have the ability to do that right now. I don't know if that's something- Colleen? In the meantime, while Colleen is looking for mm -hmm. a way to, to, to get that link live, uh, Maurice or Asa, do you have any idea? This is like a $24,000 question. What the transition is going to look like? Are you expecting to receive any new orders for getting the building department to be restaffed in person? Is that looking like a 60 days down the road? Any idea what's what that's going to look like after April 30th? We don't, we don't, I, we really don't oh, know. I mean, the, the, city, the, city, the city is, is literally 
reassessing that on a on a on a daily basis. So we don't we don't we don't have a time frame at, at, at this point. And and that is why it's so important to have that link available because as soon as uh, that particular information becomes available, it will be immediately po uh, posted on that on that website. Um, okay. So uh, can you hear it, Ace? Yes. Okay. Uh, perfect. Um, We'll also make that available to everyone and we'll send mm -hmm. uh, send to you all. Yeah, Cheryl, I think that's a, a great, what we can do is leverage our social media so we can post this link as well on our Instagram, Facebook yep. page, and LinkedIn so that everybody has access to it as well as our AI Miami website. And Ace and Maurice, is there anything else that we can do to help push the information to the architectural and engineering community? This this link it's a great start. I mean, and, and I would I would be very okay with both Marie's uh, email and my email being shared with your entire community. I would be more than happy to to assist. You know, I'm a, I'm a fellow. At, you know, I'm an AIA member, just like uh, most of you guys there. So I, I I know that a lot of you are struggling, don't have the answers, and I'll be more than happy to assist throughout this period and, and, and making sure that you, you do have access to those to those answers, okay? This is the web the, 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 the web page that uh, a lot of you should be familiar with. Essentially, if you go to miamigov.com, you will see a quick link to uh, COVID-19 updates. And this particular web page has been dedicated to our permitting continuity uh, services. And, and it not only talks about building, but it also talks about planning, zoning, and public works, okay, and how you can get steel services that are permitting related from those particular departments. Uh, this page is updated on an almost daily basis, so it, it's a great resource uh, for um, for the A and E community. Okay, um, great. So we will definitely uh, post that link. Uh, we'll also send all of the uh, all of you. We'll get a, uh, a survey about uh, the, uh, this town hall, and we ask that you respond as quickly as possible. And within that survey, we will send uh, the emails and the links. Um, and then we'll also help um, Ace. And if there's any other thing that comes up, um, Maurice and Ace that we can help with or uh, get information out about or anything that we can do. I mean, we don't, um, we, don't we, we certainly don't have all the answers. I mean, so this is a great opportunity to also hear feedback from the any &E community. Sometimes, you know, we think we're doing the best thing that we can to still provide services. And there might be things that we may not have thought of. So uh, please, if, if you have any suggestions, my door is, is wide open. Please send me those suggestions. And, and if they're good ones and, and, and they'll help us in, in terms of how we can better provide those services, I'll be more than happy to adjust accordingly, okay? So um, I just got an email from Angel, and uh, it's Angel Saki 2. Okay. And uh, so Junior. he said, sorry, he wasn't able to speak. There's something with the microphone going on, but he wanted to thank you um, for the, uh, pre it was a tremendous presentation with a lot of information. And I uh, said, happy to see us all active and well. Mm -hmm. Likewise. Thank you, guys. Uh, thanks for everybody that uh, tuned in. Uh, stay tuned, because we're going to be doing this on a regular basis. And also, we're going to um, uh, have other programming that uh, we think that uh, you will be interested in. So keep. Uh, Keep connected to us and look out for your emails. Thank you all so much. And Thank you. Thanks, Maurice and Ace. Thank you, Ace. Appreciate it. Thanks, Daphne. Take care, Cheryl. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Bye everybody.